Uh, so I want to ask one quick question to all of you before we ask this beautiful, intelligent audience and uh, open up for some questions. Uh, if there's a data set uh, that you'd really like that doesn't exist today, what would it be? I mean, it's hard because, you yeah, know, but in general terms. You know, what would you really like to get your hands on? What you know, I think that there's there's sort of two that I see in development, and I think it's going to be really interesting. Being able to truly extract sentiment and tone, um, number one, not an encyclopedia or dictionary of, of words, but really be able to take that content in context. And a lot of people are doing it, but there's um, more accuracy needed. And then um, transcription on voice. Again, there's um, probably a standard that's more like 80% accurate or, or so, maybe a little bit less. But, but those those two technologies and what that could mean for the creation of data is hugely interesting to me. Mm. Bertrand? Uh, I mean, as a data vendor, we keep thinking mm. about uh, how we improve uh, our data set. I mean, the, the way we, we think about this actually is we go back to focus to our core markets. Actually, our core market is to help our publishers build a better app business through data and apps. And by extension, we are happy to serve financial, app stores and networks, all these guys, but our core is, a, is a app publishers. So we try to think about what data they need to run their business and they need to understand how their apps get discovered, how they get downloaded, how they engage and retain users, and finally how they monetize users. So we try to align all our product roadmap on, on, on all of these steps. How is it that we can provide more visibility there? Mm -hmm. So for instance, we are soon launching some marketing intelligence service where we provide more visibility of where ads are run, so which channels, wh who is displaying what, uh, that sort of stuff. So that's some new stuff that is coming. Mm. Matthew? I mean, I think the area where, you know, I, I certainly have seen a lot less data sources than I would like to see is, uh, you know, in understanding industrial companies, uh, more of the B2B world. You know, there's a lot of good data sources on the consumer side. On the T and on the TMT side, also a lot of good data sources on the healthcare side. If you're investing in those sectors, but you know, if you're wanting to understand how trucks move across the country, um, you know, hard to do trains, hard to do boats. I think are probably the exception. There's some pretty good data around boats, but in general, you know, I, I keep I keep thinking that the you know, some of the you know, cr uh, growing use of sensors and Internet of Things will light that up more, but I haven't seen it yet. No. Well, obviously, Matt and Bina can speak to what in, you know, equities uh, analysts want and investors want. For us, a lot of what we're thinking about is sort of the, in, we're, we kind of want to be the Nielsen of the real world, but we're thinking now about the intersection between the, the advertising world and the real world a lot. Um, so we already measure and tell advertisers which ads drive people into the Olive Garden or the, you know, the Jaguar dealership or whatever with our panel, but we're thinking about how we mash up with set-top box data so that we can start to eventually tell TV advertisers, you know, like a car company or a, a film company, you know, seeing this ad versus this different ad campaign drove effective lift with this demographic to walk into your, your storefronts or across the country. And so that's where I think, you know, we don't yet have full access to the right set of set top box data with the right sample mash to, uh, to do that. But that's going to happen. That's going to happen. And, and so sort of our Nielsen of the real world ambition, I think, is in that direction. Oh, interesting. 